हाई एवरी वन नाउ विल टॉक अबाउट एंगुलर कॉम्पोनेंट लाइफ साइकिल मैथड्स और आइदर यू कैन सी दैट एंगुलर कॉम्पोनेंट लाइफ साइकिल हुक्स बोथ आर द सेम थिंग सो फर्स्ट आई लेट यू नो वट आर द लाइफ साइकिल मैथड्स एंड टू अंडरस्टैंड इट बैटर आई विल गिव यू वन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ह्यूमन लाइफ साइकिल बिकॉज सी एंगुलर कॉम्पोनेंट लाइफ साइकिल एंड ह्यूमन लाइफ साइकिल हैज सम सिमिलरिटीज so that you can understand it better i will give uh, example of human life cycle first then we will see the list of all uh, life cycle methods in the official documentation and we'll take example for all important life cycle methods and at last we'll discuss some important interview question also this is angular 19 playlist that will definitely help you out for angular job project and interviews you can access this playlist from description box of this part all right so let's move to the first question what is life cycle see we know that uh, in human we have uh, basically three uh, major uh, you can say that phases in the life cycle first one when a uh, baby born after that he is getting younger and older like uh, first he'll go to the school then uh, college and then get married and so on and after that uh, he will expire right uh, so this is the life cycle methods there he born uh, and get a uh, get younger and older and then expire similarly in angular component we have these life cycle methods uh, these you can say that phases first a component will be initialized or created then uh, that will be updated by the inputs or parameters or maybe properties uh, and after that uh, if uh, we uh, close the tab or you can say that uh, close that file or uh, maybe close the component and after that if we move to the other area of our application or maybe we hide the component that time that component is actually get destroyed so this is the last phase all right so let me open the uh, official documentation for angular angular life cycle hooks then you can go to the component life cycle and there you will find that we have the uh, these phases first create then change detection then the rendering and at last destruction that means destroy so in create phase when component is getting created and in change component and in render when there are some changes in your ui or changes in the uh, component inputs and data then these uh, life cycle methods actually run and last one when we uh, move to the other part of our application or that component is got get hide uh, in the ui that time this destroy ng on destroy life cycle method runs now let's move to the code this is our output screen and here we'll write some code so first i will make one component so let me write ngg c4 component and component name you can put anything i will prefer user after that you will see you can close this terminal here you can see that we have one more <coughs> uh, you can say that component with a folder and let me use this component in the app component so what i need to do first i have to import it so just put there uh, user component and after that on the ui uh, yeah there so we can simply use uh, app user and there we go and now you will see that this is visible on the ui right okay so let me change this text size first so let me add their h2 tag and put their user component cool okay so now uh, i want to try with the first one one more thing guys so some guys actually include this constructor or creation phase with the angular life cycle hooks or angular life cycle method some guys are avoiding this right they said that the life cycle methods are started from the ng on it because this is the you can say that default class of the or standard class of the uh, javascript and typescript uh, code right so that's why uh, in if in interviews they ask like what is the first life cycle method they, you can tell the both scenario in detail like some guys include constructor also in life cycle method some started with the ng on it because constructor is basically the uh, core or standard class of javascript javascript code all right okay so now uh, let's go to the app.component.ts and i will start writing their constructor right and there let me put their console.log constructor so as i mentioned like this is uh, this life cycle method or or constructor will only 
uh, run when your uh, class or your component is just created right and if i just put there a debugger let me go to the source and then yeah if i just put there and if i run there until this code is getting executing there is nothing uh, is display from the user component here you can see that right after that once uh, this is executed then this user component is actually uh, placed there that means uh, this will only run when your component is just uh, getting created all right and after that there is a, another ng uh, ng on in it yeah so <clears throat> if i just make a console.log and say that this is okay so this is a second life cycle method i will just put uh, one more console uh, debugger there and so first one when component is created second one when this is getting initialized right but when this is initializing still this is not plotted on the ui so in the second phase we just move there and still you can see that uh, okay so this one is coming from the last right let me refresh yeah now yeah so component is there but if there is some value that will be not plotted there let me give you one example uh, if let's say name that we have and name is let's say anil and there i'm putting there this dot name is uh, even if i just put there this dot name is uh, sam right and i just want to show this name over the ui h1 name now let me refresh it once yeah and i have to just put this uh, debugger there right so if i just refresh now you can see that nothing on the ui from user component now when we are initializing the text by default text which we have on the uh, user html part this is visible but name property is still not visible after i just re-render uh, uh, uh just uh, you can say that play this then sam is here right so this will basically run when when we are initializing the uh you can say that uh, uh, component right okay uh, after that i will not move to the ng on it or render uh before that i will show you the destroy because uh this is very interesting how we can implement and then we have to pass some you can see the data and all then uh, we can see the ng on change and re-rendering and all right so now what i'll do name is not important so i'm just removing this name right now right because this will maybe this will give you some confusion so let me remove it yeah so the last one if i yeah if i just use this ng on destroy by default you find that this is not actually running right in any case uh, and let me put there ng this one ah, sorry yeah now you'll see that uh, and we can remove these debuggers also yeah okay constructor is run ng on it run but when this will be run when our this user component will be removed from the ui then this will run but uh, okay how it can be removed let me take one small example so what we can do there uh, let me take a counter there right counter property counter and its value is 0 by default and there is a function update counter and uh, yeah there this dot counter plus plus this is increasing and let me print this value also over the app.component.ts with the h1 tag counter okay and let me take a button there that will be much better than no this uh, h1 tag sorry uh, counter i have to put there all right right so there is nothing change for now but if i just make a change there click and uh, let's call that function uh, which is their update counter in the app yep now it will be start getting updated here you can see that one two three let me zoom it out if you can't see this right yeah right 
but still there is no change so what i'll do there i'll check a condition right the condition will be something uh, let's take a div first and if star ng if and the counter not equal to 5 then it should visible and if the counter is equal to 5 then it should be hidden right and let's go to the app.component.ts and import the ng if also yep and now you will see when i will reach on the 5 this component will be hidden from the ui and then once this will be hidden from the ui or you can say that removed from the ui then that uh, destroy uh, ng on destroy lifecycle method will be called one two three four five here you can see that so now let's say uh, when this component is just get hidden and you want to call some api or uh, maybe you want to perform some event or something that time you can uh, you can say that uh, perform this event right or let me try one thing so if i just make alert let me see if that will work or not uh, this component will be hidden two three four five and see now this component will be hidden i we got the message right same thing this kind of things you can do there right okay uh, now what next let's move to the last one which is uh, you can say that uh, mm, re-rendering phase right and there are two methods one is after re-render and one is after next re-render so next re-render will only run once when there is change in the dom and after render will uh, actually uh, you can say that uh, run every time whenever uh, there is a change in dom so let's try this so for that what i need to do uh, i will uh, you can say that make some changes in the child component and i'll detect these changes in the parent component with the help of these two lifecycle methods cool okay so here you can see that in a child okay. so that will be more easier if we just take example of ng on change first that will be more easier than this and after this implementation we can easily implement this right so what i'll do there now in the app.component.ts to the app.user i will pass a props and this props will be let's say prop means that or property you can say that that will be counter right so counter value whatever we are updating on the ui uh, that will be passed to the whatever we are updating on the app.component.app.component uh, app that will be passed to the child component also right this is passed now go to the app go to the user component and there use the input decorator and there you can see that counter and it's maybe default value is zero because uh, default value should be there if the value is not come from the UI or something, right? Okay, so now uh, can't bind this. Why we can't bind this? Let me figure it out. And uh, yep, what I am guessing, everything is fine. It just need to reload once. So let me try this. Otherwise, it seems this is fine. But uh, let's try to build and yeah, now perfectly working fine, right? and now in uh, child we have a counter so we can uh, display on the child ui so let me again put a h2 tag and then here we go right so if i just update anything on from the child component in parent component that is visible to the child component and we are getting input so now you can see that there ng on change will run every time on components input is changed and here we have input this one right so let's try to run it yeah and to just show this let me uh, comment all the all of the previous uh, lifecycle methods right uh, ng on it and all so that we can easily identify them like uh, this is running or not right and now ng on change uh, let me make it console there only right and whenever we will pass or we will change uh, the counter value from the parent this will be also get called here you can see that right again 
this 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 right here you can see that okay so this is how ng unit will work whenever we will get any new input from the parent component uh, or maybe not exactly on the parent component if you're getting the input from the child component this tool up, uh, still update now the last one uh, let's try to render and here what we'll do we will capture that anything is getting updated in the child component and that will capture in the parent component cool so we know that uh, this counter is getting updated in the child component so in the parent component app.component.ts what i'll do there first i will just get the view child or what is that child view at the rate view child view child right so this will uh, help us to uh, get the instance of the child component right and user i will put there so this should be the name or you can see that reference variable so let's give the reference variable there id hash or this right and uh, then user component name right and type you can define any for right now okay so we know that in child component this property is getting updated and if you want to use this render in the parent component then you have to define the constructor first constructor and inside this you can use their uh, what was that after uh, re-render let me try the second one first right yeah and there it will take a callback function like this and if i just make some log uh, the after re-render and then what we'll do there we'll check this dot user component dot uh, you can see that counter right because we are getting this value so now you will find that the every click ng on change is also uh, updated in the child component right but let me comment out this because we just want to see the output for after render right so here you can see that after every time this is getting reload like this because one time that was that, that was hidden so the value was not visible there and now you can see that perfect okay so as mentioned this will be called every time and the after next will be called only one time so similarly if i just copy and paste it and mention after next uh, re-render then you will see this is actually only getting called first time next is only one time and it will not get called again until we are refreshing right so this is how lifecycle methods are actually work uh, in angular if you still have any doubt confusion you can ask me in the comment section thank you so much for watching this part please like this video subscribe my channel and comment out your feedback this is my ptm ngp donation number thanks everyone